Today on the podcast, we've got one of the best storytellers we know, and we're on a boat. Uh, Mr. Shane Griffin, the founder of the Vitamin Patch Club, we interviewed him inside of the boat where he lives in Marina Del Rey. Shane's one of those longtime entrepreneurs that's been doing stuff since he was a little kid, but really started his first major business in the Toronto nightclub industry where he built multi-million dollar nightclubs. Now from that, Shane got deep into the nightclub game, had a cocaine and a drinking problem, and actually went to rehab. We talk about it on the podcast as well, but went to rehab out here in Southern California and came out a health practitioner, if you would believe it. And now he's on his second startup here in Southern California, the Vitamin Patch Club. On the podcast today, we talk about the ups, the downs, how he created and founded this company. And as usual with Shane, we talk about a lot of other craziness that has gone on in that man's life. We hope you enjoy it. Today, we've got a special treat, Timothy. We're on a boat. One, One. two, we've got our boy, founder of the Vitamin Patch Club, Mr. Shane Griffin. Shane. Hey. What is that, dude? That's my Howie Mandel. <laughs> <laughs> I was at America's Got Talent. So that's Were you? Yeah, Were I you? went to one of the live shows. It was awesome. Yeah? It's actually really cool. I bought it at a charity Oh, oh yeah, I remember seeing that. Go ahead. Yeah, mm-hmm. I posted about it. I bought it at a charity event for, um, uh, oh, geez, don't fail me. Quarterback, USC stud. Uh, Matt Leinart. Leinart. You. You're Matt going left hand. That's how I knew that. Is that how you Yeah, you were going this. Shane just left. Left, left lining. Yeah, which, left-liny. which, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't tell you any other USC guys that USC? Uh, yeah, USC. Left handers? Leinart. That's pretty yeah, impressive that's that he knows uh, him yeah. from that. Yeah. That's awesome. Todd Marinovich. I don't even know who the fuck that is. Yeah, I don't. Oh. I'm with you. I'm not with you. <laughs> <laughs> From the 90s. Name a, name a hockey yeah, player. Well, name a hockey player. I'm good at hockey. Uh, I can do hockey. Mario Lemieux. <laughs> I was going to say Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. Gretzky. Yeah. yeah I don't Wayne know. Gretzky's birthday was three days ago, actually. That's that birthday, right? Wayne. It's a national holiday. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I don't know shit about hockey. Hockey's good. Three he, days he ago. He played for the Kings. Filming. He did. He won you guys their first was he like? Cap. Was he like a, a god around here? Or was he just like anybody? He, no, he was a god. So when at, what happened? There was there was a, a lot of controversy on. He was Edmonton. Edmonton Oilers won like three Stanley Cups or four. I could be wrong. Fact check. Um, <laughs> we won't be doing. We need a fact. We need a fact check. They were doing checker. very well. Yeah. <laughs> he set every record, every goal, every assist, every point, everything. Phenom. He's absolutely the best. Uh huh. He's the largest phenom of the game. I don't care. People say, well, different times, different whatever. Sure. He's still got all the records. And I know some of those records are unattainable now because there's less body contact. And you can't have goons to protect mm-hmm. him and stuff like that. But anyway, so Bruce McNall from L.A. cut a deal to uh, basically buy him. And it was the largest trade ever done in NHL. And I think Bruce had owned the L.A. Kings for about four years. Something like that. And it was a huge thing. Like, Canada was pissed. If, if like, uh, There's a great 30 for 30 Like if LeBron, it. If oh, really? Be, yeah, yeah, there is actually. There yeah, is a wonderful great. one. Yeah. It's great. If, it'd be like if LeBron went to the Raptors. You guys would just or to LA. You guys might just bomb us <laughs> or to LA. Oh yeah, for you guys, yeah, yeah, it's a little more personal, <laughs> right? But you know, I heard this time around, you guys are awesome with yep. because you're like, you know what? He came back. He won us a Got championship. He said what he was going to do. Yeah, and I don't, and, can't and, hate and, on it. and 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 love him now. Was, the way he left the first time was was a heartbreak to you. Well, sure. I, I think it, it it wasn't great, and, and people in Cleveland obviously hated it. But I think it was the way he did it. It was just you know, you do this big production, and then you say, "I'm leaving." Yeah. Right, kind of well, and I face. think a lot of people. It was a last minute last time too, where like a lot of people had already signed the free agents, and when LeBron was one of the last ones to make that decision, so when he made the decision to leave, the Cavs didn't have anyone else to pick up. Basically, so there's there's more background to it that really right, meant, yeah, right. and it, and it was heart wrenching. I mean, sure, he was yeah. and, and at that point we hadn't won a championship in any sport <laughs> were ever. You, were so. you on the team? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was. Yeah. Starting, yeah, starting PG. I didn't know you were on the team. You'll see team. him come out and wipe up. The yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Show him the halftime guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I take yeah. that gig. Never mind. Probably well, pays well, more than what I'm doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> less time, uh, more less money. Time. Guaranteed schedule. <laughs> I know when I'm working. Right, right. Yeah, you know. that's that's weird with, with, when you have your own biz. So, you yeah. So, you anyways, the, the um, America's Got Talent. It was Matt Leinhart's foundation. And okay. As you guys know, one of the things with my business with VPC or Vitamin Patch Club, yeah, is that every month we pull support. that up a little bit. Got it? Yeah. All right. There's that right. beautiful Shane right voice. There we go. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, coming in deep from the Toronto zone. Hey. I can do my stripper voice. Hey. Uh. Ladies on the main stage, Paris, coming up right now. <laughs> Put your hands together. <laughs> All right. Uh, enough of that. Yeah. How I know that voice too well is a problem. Right. Mm-hmm. We'll, t- we'll touch on that too. Yeah, I guess. we sure will. Um, Anyways, Matt Leinhart does it. He's got a foundation that supports uh, Los Angeles and Orange County, inner city youths, uh, and, under, and people without 
the abilities to play sports. So it's not just inner city. It's also cool. any, any demographic really just like, I guess it concentrates more on inner city. And, um, uh, I went to a charity event and the, uh, the one of my girlfriends, her daughter for her birthday was like, I want to go to America's Got Talent. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. seven. Right. And these are like on tickets you can't get unless you're in the L.A. circle. OK. I mean, you know, it's it's gotcha. a live show. You got to yeah. know somebody mm -hmm. on production or wait in line. You can you can do the uh, the call, the on call thing. And <sighs> I know my friend, she was not going to wait in line at six in the morning yeah. with her daughter. It wasn't happening. Jesus, She's yeah. Beverly Hills. For like three hours, Mom, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. ten hours. Yeah. Like these people are there since like six a.m. They start shooting at five. That's nuts. Like yeah. they're there all day. Like yeah. and it's it's like getting concert tickets to Backstreet Boys in the nineties. Yeah, right? I, I, I did that. <clears throat> I know you did. Yeah. That's why I brought I, it up. I, I we got photo that. evidence. Yeah, yeah. You know? that was when his beard didn't grow, ladies and gentlemen. It was a sad, it. sad time for us, uh, for Mr. Patrick Kern. Um. Anyways, yeah, it was awesome though. It was really cool. The neat thing about it, uh, I don't know if you're America's Got Talent fans. But I, yeah, I, I've seen yeah, I love that. production. Anything to do with production, the buildup of shit and how things are put together and yeah. kind of how I build all my business. The most fun part is actually the, the building of it, the mm -hmm. running of it sucks. <laughs> People suck. Suppliers suck. Sure. Customer service sucks. But building a concept, an idea, and actually being able the to do it. The process of it. It's a blast because yeah. you're going to fail. You expect to fail, and it doesn't hurt to fail because you're moving forward in your failures. Yeah. Whereas when you fail with customer service, you lose income. Yeah. Right. It's like that customer leaves and you're like, oh, I'm a failure. That sucks. Mm -hmm. And I and I actually like to please people. So if I leave, somebody leaves disgruntled. That bothers me more than if I blow 20, 40, 50 grand on some marketing initiative that didn't work. I'm like, ah, I gave it a, I gave it a try. Yeah. But, you know, when somebody says your product sucks and I hate you, it's like, ooh, I didn't give it a good try. Yeah. You know, so anyways, it was awesome because the the doors to the uh, uh, America's Got Talent stage, they were def they weren't working that night. And it's a live show. So they had to go on. So they were. You got to see the set changes behind. So I got like a double win for me. I'm oh, like, uh -huh. the, the talent That's is cool. great. It's really cool to watch. And then I'm like, oh look, that's how. And they've yeah. got. You want to talk about a crew? Oh, I'm sure it's 150 people. It's like a mm -hmm. beehive happens. Mm -hmm. Like I always expect, because we do production for a charity event. We're actually doing next month a big one with our family. It's our cystic fibrosis. It's our annual gal event. I fly home every year and I run production for it with my friend Adele, who owns Soundscape Lighting and Visual. And oh yeah, I've seen you do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. we did, I get all with the little production directors thing yep. on, and we've got different cameras and five or six. Uh, uh, this year we've got five different uh, uh, talent. Um, 14 different lighting sequences, which is not a lot, but for a charity gala, it gets, you know, we bring in a million dollars worth of sound and lighting to this event. Oh, Lord. So it's a pretty big deal. And we raise a lot of money, and I think it's my mother's last year as the co chair. She's been doing it for 15 years now. Wow. And she's got some stuff going on personally this year with her, with, uh, with family, uh, things that she's got to take care of, manage. My, my grandmother's getting very old, and, and we've got a complication with one of my aunts, um, her sister who uh, just got diagnosed with cancer recently. So um, she's going to focus in that mm -hmm. direction, uh, which is good for her. Um, so it's kind of our last year. So I get to see their tricks. The last year. They got tricks. Yeah. Like a simple little thing. This is a crazy thing. So you know when they do the golden buzzer? Yeah. Right? And, all the, and you wonder how the heck they clean all of that up. It's a 50-foot stage. Uh -huh. How do they get all of that in a commercial break? With just like, I mean, they're, they're doing a set change, and a, a, a stage change and everything else. Yeah. Inverted leaf blower. Yeah, I was uh -huh. going to say some kind of blower. I yeah. was blown away. They, but they suck it up. Yeah. They don't blow it. They, right. just re, re, right. they turn the blower around backwards yeah. or whatever and turn it to a vacuum. And but it's, it's gone in But this guy's seconds. got like a wand. Yep. <laughs> Whole thing's gone. I'm like, that to me was brilliant because I want to do confetti bombs at our event, but I don't want to like have it. Have to I don't want it. Well, it's, the, it's the cleanup of the <laughs> yeah. hall after, yeah. right? They'll lose their crap on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm like, nah, I can never be able to do it. This year, <laughs> confetti bombs. <laughs> yeah. You know? What's my mom's last year, right? So I wanted to go out with a bang, literally. Yeah. You know? So... Nice. So why not? Yeah. All right, Shane. Um, so we're talking Toronto stuff here. Let's, yes. Let's, we'll, we'll get to Vitamin Patch Club. Sure. But but there's a story to tell before that. There is. And and we know you a little bit, know your story. Yeah. But so you started, was that your first business? Was was the nightclub business or no? It wasn't my very Toronto. first. No, my you, very you had like t-shirt business. Yeah. You had, we you had were selling couple. cars. Yeah. You're like, we did. You were, you've done a lot before that. We did. I My very first uh, entrepreneurial start was a company called um, SMG Enterprises, Shane Michael Griffin. Okay. Nice. I was 13. Nice. Um, Sounds more official than a 13-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was a big fan of Alex P. Keaton. Okay. I have family ties. Yeah. Big fan. So yeah. I kind of, I used to actually wear a little suit to school once in a while. <laughs> Stop it. And I didn't get my ass kicked. So the, the bullying, the funny. bullying to the five foot five at that time, probably five two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. 
didn't happen because I was always <laughs> as gregarious as I am. I was my voice was much louder mm -hmm. than my height could ever be, um, and my personality. I've always gotten along with everybody. But so SMG Enterprises, how that happened was uh, I was just going into high school. And there was a bunch of different high schools opening up, and we were kind of a growing population at the time in the suburbs of Toronto and Markham area. With growing population comes some crime. Right. And there were some, let's just say, bad influences. And there was a couple teachers that had been beaten and a bus driver that had been beaten <laughs> from students. Wow. So there was this fear of, of this kind of fear amongst the teaching community. And I went to this one seminar, and I don't know how I got into this thing. It was a company called Quorum. It was an MLM, multi-level marketing, and they sold personal attack alarms. So they looked like a pager, yeah. and they had a little yeah. pin on the top. And then when you pulled the pin, 180 decibel siren went off. Oh, Jeez. so it was like a little—it was like a siren grenade. Yeah. So you put you just wore it on your belt. So I went in. I think I brought my dad to the thing. I don't know. I don't have an idea. Found it. it was just out by the airport in Toronto. It's like one of these. It was like one of those sham conventions. Like, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. with Quorum, we can change yeah. the world and yeah. get behind yeah. us. You know. Yeah. And I'm 13, going, "Oh, this is awesome." But of I course. just saw money signs. Yeah. So money symbols. So I actually I bought. Um, I I paid the 1,500 bucks to be a member of their multi-level marketing. Got the product at I don't know, call it 29 bucks a piece. Sold it at 89, but I sold it damn near every teacher in our in our school oh, system wow. like almost damn. everyone we had like five or ten high schools yeah so i went like around. a briefcase and suited i up. literally did yeah. i walked in like with a suit and i'm like hey you know like you're you're at danger you're in danger <laughs> like there's people that are chasing you <laughs> that's you, crazy you could get beaten like by the time you right. get to your car yeah like, so what you, wow. you've always been doing biz yeah in some aspect i've been brought my my family's entrepreneurial my dad started yeah. my dad and my mom started with nothing like couldn't even rub two nickels together okay dad left home at 16 basically he's a farming in family. toronto Ottawa Valley, okay. so French, French Canadian, and my mother was from Sherbrooke, and her parents are wonderful people. But they were kind of my grandfather was they're a little bit I'm not going to say hippie or eccentric, but they didn't take themselves too serious nor life. Mm -hmm. They just kind of went with rolled with, with it, you know. Like my grandfather was uh, had a movie theater named after my grandmother called Myra Theater. Um, he was on TV in Toronto or in Montreal on the CBC or a small local thing, and and maybe not CBC, but he was one of the first people on TV way back then. So they were like little kind of mini celebrities in their small little, you know, French Canadian town. Yeah. And my dad, farming family, Irish Catholic, uh, you know, I mean, 18 kids or 14 kids in the family somewhere oh in there. Oh, my you know? Lord. I think 18 if they all live. There's 14 that were living, and now I think we've got like 10. Gee, right? And I got, I've got like 29 crazy. or 31 first cousins, something like that. It's crazy. Wow. And my dad, being a farming family, like he looked at his father. And he's like, I don't know if I want to be a farmer. He said, then you're no good to me. Bye-bye. Ah. Like, we bred you to work. Yeah. You don't want to work, get out. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and it wasn't and it wasn't hateful at the time. It was... So my dad left and went to Montreal, literally lived on the streets, like, you know, Damn. like slept in, in, uh, what do you call them? Homeless shelters? Yeah, tanks. like shelters yeah. and stuff like that, yeah. right? I thought it was going to be a cool like, Canadian term you know, <laughs> what you were looking for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> slept in an igloo on the <laughs> yeah. side of the pond, eh? You know, it's great. Right. <laughs> um, so he, uh, yeah, he, he, he was not, I wouldn't say homeless, but he was, he was in between. And then he got a job uh, working the Dew Line, which is up in Greenland. And that was paying like thirty five or forty thousand dollars a year in the late sixties, um, which was huge mm -hmm. money. Sure. And he went and it was working up laying actually the inter uh, uh, inter defense warning programs, the, the Star Wars program that the U.S. had against Russia. Okay. Right. You guys had were laying cables to identify if missiles were coming over. Mm -hmm. I don't know shit about this. Yeah. It was. It was. <laughs> well, you paid us to do it. Okay. Because only Canadians are crazy enough to go up to the Arctic Circle and lay pipe. And, and um, nice enough. Yeah, and nice yeah. enough. We're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. They they fly over us, right? You need yeah, to we got you back. <laughs> yeah, whatever you need. So, um, so he went up there and did that. Uh, then he met my mom when he returned. I believe he went back to McDonald College. He actually had this is a kind of a cool story. So he didn't have his high school finished, and he met a Jewish man. We're not Jewish. We're Catholic. And this Jewish rabbi got him into a private Jewish school on like a scholarship to finish his high school, even though he wasn't huh. Jewish. There's some story mm -hmm, to that. I mm -hmm. could be a little wrong. Yeah. I've heard it in kind of wives' tales and my yeah. dad's legendary talk. So he might have just gone back and gotten a GED, but the story <laughs> he tells me is way better. <laughs> um, so he might have gotten a good enough degree. Yeah. Um, anyway, so him and my mother moved to Toronto after they finally met. They, he chased her, chased her down, got married to her. Um, she was graduated McDonald College as a teacher. Or, um, she was at McGill University, sorry, McDonald College is like its affiliate. My dad was at McDonald, that's where they met. Moved to Toronto, I think $1,000 in debt, and they started cleaning apartments. Huh. Like the first time they moved into an apartment, my dad, my mom went to the property manager and like, who cleans them when people move out? And he's like, well, I do. He's like, I'll do that for you. 
So she also taught up in the Northwest Territories on Native Reserves, Indigenous People Reserves. Um, and she also taught for the military up there in school, too. So she was back and forth. So they've just had a go-get-it attitude. Uh, I actually sometimes have quandaries with that or issues with it because I don't know anything else than 100%. Sure. I was actually talking to my mother about this yesterday. I'm like, you know, I don't know if I'm too hard on my team sometimes because I don't, I've never seen my parents go, like, 9 to 5. Yeah. But that never exists in our family. Yeah. Right? It was when you get up to when you go to bed, like our dinner table talks, right? We're always, you know, do you see what's going on with purchasing? Do we get those ARs back in, the APs all yeah, that? Yeah. You know, like that was it's, our it's, talk. It was a business I'm, meeting. It was. Yeah. We're like, we're going to Ohio, we're bidding on this job, and I'm going to be gone for four days. And like, you just learned, you learned about the guys on the company, what their roles were. And like, I knew all every name of every employee my mm-hmm. dad had. Um, and that was this, the business that he ended up, my, my brother now uh, acquired from him. They, they were partners first and acquired that same industry, and that's automotive sector. And they did quality control and maintenance for the assembly plants for GM, Chrysler, Ford, Porsche, Audi, Rolls Royce, wow. everybody all around. Gotcha. The world. Actually, get working on Tesla right now. He's getting think Tesla on Saturday. Tesla's in the news today. Yeah, yeah I don't think really. he's in good news. Nah. What is it? Nah. I didn't hear it. Not great news. Elon's, um, you know, there's From that based sh- on that tweet that he did like two months ago or a SEC's month ago. SEC's going to file after him. Yeah. Yeah, you can't tweet I don't know that anything you're about gonna, this. So he tweeted that he was going to bring the company private again, that he had investors secured. Yeah. You basically, can't, you basically, can't say that you're going to no, do No, because it. it's a public company and it affects the shares, the shareholders' prices and stuff like he that. Did a yeah. share bump. Yeah. yeah. So, if, so if his shares are at 45 bucks, said, hey, guys, I'm going to take the company public. I'm going to buy, I'm going to take it private. I'm going to buy all the stock back at $60, right. a 20, 20% gain. Yeah. Um, whatever the number was. Yeah. And I've already got investors and financing secured. Everybody buys that stock until it gets to sixty. Yeah. When it gets to which would be his acquisition price, mm-hmm. uh-huh. so he bumped the stock. He sold a bunch of his stock. <sighs> yes. I don't know if he sold. That might not be true. Again, that could be the Irish in me. Right. But, <laughs> I, but, but yeah. I'm pretty certain somebody he knows did. Otherwise, the SEC. Yeah. Anyways, it's highly illegal. They're you can't do that. Suing them basically. Yeah. Want they want to fire him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they want to take him out of control. It's, yeah. You know what's very parallel to, even though it's a little, it's very different parallels. Reminds me of uh, Steve Jobs with Apple. Did he come out with something? He didn't, but he got a little kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. kind of got a yeah. little crazy, th- and I Apple think... pushed him out. Yeah. Apple was like, no, yeah, you're gone. And sure. then they sank. They failed because you need that creative craziness yeah. to be able to do the extremes. I, I, my brother's been at the Tesla plant, and he said, the, the toured it, to, to quote it. Yeah. And he said, the unique thing about that, and we've been in automotive, our family, for our whole lives. I don't, like, I've worked in more paint shops and Chrysler assembly plants. I've been at Jefferson. I've been at Windsor. I've been at, in, in Toronto, of course. I worked there for two years at the plant. And there's kind of a, a rhythm to automotive assembly. Like it's, I call it George Jetson technology or Fred Flintstone management. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. It, hasn't, it hasn't grown with the times. There is more automation, but you're still dealing with the old CAW unions. Right. There's still like 14 different locals and every different thing. And there's like a little city and like there's politics <laughs> with and, and like the way you do things like a guy can go from GM to Ford and the culture might be a little Ford is more militant as the culture used to be. It was like that was you came from Ford. You were you were harsh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like you'd rip doors off cars and right. be like, fuck you, you're not painting right. And it was yeah. like more. Ah, yeah. Right. Uh, GM was kind of more relaxed. Um, Chrysler was really chill. Chrysler was like peace, love, and harmony. Right? <laughs> Except for a couple guys that I worked for under Chrysler, Guido uh, Guido Colarossi. He was he actually did rip a door off of a car <laughs> in the paint assembly. He was coming out of stamping. They're retooling for the Intrepid, the very first Chrysler Intrepid. Huh. And I was I was coming up the paint aisle. Uh, we were doing it was it was shut down, doing a two month. They shut down for a month to retool the whole plant to be able to build the new car, and. Um, and they they weren't getting the gaps and the doors right, so the weld on the 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 welding robot wasn't working right. I mean something like that. Yeah. And he walked up and grabbed. He goes, "This gap is wrong. You see the gap? It should be like this." And ripped the fucking door right off, like in this like stamping part of the plan. I'm like, "Oh, gotta be a monster." Yeah. No, sp- he's like five two. Little he's dude. like the smallest wow. little Italian guy, right? But he was wow. a badass. Guido, great guy. I love Guido. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of guys there. I'm sure. But the 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 thing with Tesla is. My brother was pretty much told by a couple guys that worked there that have come from GM and Chrysler, like we said, when you come in here to talk about things, don't ever mention that this is how we do it at other plants because he wants nothing that has been done before. Uh, yeah. So that, that's, that's, cool. that's the culture of the business. Yeah, and yeah. even though they're building a car, the same way they're building a car, it's an assembly line. Yeah. You can't ever approach it with, with the way that's done. And I think that taking that guy out of that mix... I do think he's slipping a little bit. I'm like, you know, you got to dial yourself back. And I saw him at the UFC fight, actually. I oh, really? I posted the pictures with it. Huh, okay. Um, he sat, well, it's weird when he walks into a room, dude. 
Yeah. I've met some pretty big shots. Yeah. Like, you know, and I was yeah. sitting in the VIP, you know, the, the last fight yeah. one in LA. 227. Yeah. With yep. TJ and... and yeah, that's yeah. a yep. fight. Oh, yeah, man. What a beast. I love him. He's a freaking he just animal. On, uh, shout out to your, your competitors, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just had him on. Like, he was great yeah. on there. Yeah. He was great. Yeah, I mean, the science are talking about macros and rest and mm-hmm. how they train really cool. But I, I loved watching him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we snuck in. Uh, we had a little little gate bypass. A friend of mine hooked me up with a little way to get into <laughs> yeah. the like the little a little, the, sh- a little Shane. Uh, yeah. I know a guy who knows yeah. a guy who's got yeah. tickets to things. Um, yeah. So we were sitting there, and like I looked to my left, and it's uh, it's. Uh, uh, I mean, there was everybody there. There was a ton of celebrities. Yeah, there. Mickey Rourke was sitting like two over from us. And yeah. uh, saw like wasn't it Chris Pratt at that one too? Yeah, yeah, Chris yeah. Pratt. Yeah, came there's in. A, there's yeah, a bunch there, of there was a good consortium yeah. of people, and um, all of a sudden, like these two two seats just open up, like two people get up and leave. <laughs> And just for TJ's fight. And then you see this one guy walk in with like an earpiece and he's packing. He's strapped. Oh, really? Oh, full on. It's like the president's up. coming in. He does oh, like a walkthrough. Right. And then another guy walks in and stands on the other side. And then Elon comes in with his girl. So they had two seats and the two security stand in front of the two seats where two people are sitting. Damn. On either side of how the flanking. That, how does a guy get like Because you can do whatever the fuck you want when you've got a billion dollars, yeah. baby. You know? God, that's like, crazy. Like, it's crazy. people that are strapped like that in, they, in a stadium that they... Well, I wonder if they're, I guess, if they're from the... They probably work for the... Sta- was the state no, they work for him. There's private security. They're that's, like they're like oh, ex-Israeli Jesus. militia or something. Wow. Like, they're, they're special ops guys. Like, yeah. you can Good tell. for him. Like, they have, like, a sweep thing when they walk in. It was, but, 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 I mean, like, does he really need that at the stadium? Like, get, get people there, I, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if he does or doesn't. Yeah. I mean, he's... You know he's. Yeah, if I'd be more worried about TJ jumping the, the cage and choking him out than yeah, because <laughs> your security better yeah. get a bullet off. <laughs> yeah. I don't care how well Shit. trained they are with their right. with their right. Ah, right. Ah. <laughs> release your weapon. Yeah. Be choked. Yeah, yeah. Choked yeah. The, yeah. Choked you would just you'd be just picking points. up your chiclets, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, but it was it's it's weird. There is like, it, it, people in the you know the five hundred or whatever the top level is the upper deck. It's like the whole room goes. <gasps> You like, know, even if they didn't see him on the screen, he just sucks the air out of the room because he's kind of a mythical guy, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, what he has done, agree or disagree with what, who he is or his beliefs, he's, uh, he's been fearless in his investments. He's bankrupted himself like eight times to get to where oh, he is or, I or know close that. to it. Um, put all of his money, like, he, you know, he's 100% in. If anything, I kind of emulate the guy in some sense. I just don't agree with, the, like, you know, if you're running a company that employs thousands of people, then you su- you do have to err on a responsibility of how you act, speak, and represent yourself whenever people's jobs rely on your. When it's just you saying, I'm going to go to Mars because I fucking can do it and I'm a badass. Yeah. That's great. That's great. But when now people's jobs rely on how you, you can affect their life by, you know, like I don't care that he smoked pot on the Joe Rogan show. I could really give a shit yeah. what you do. But if that and the corporate structure can affect people's jobs and the investors and the company – then I think you got to prohibit yourself from. It. Maybe you should. Maybe you should. Maybe you shouldn't. It matter at all. But that's kind of the way the the game's played right now. Yeah. And you can change and be a disruptor in a ton of things. But when people's lives are involved, I think it gets a little bit different. Yeah, I think it's all. When, when also you've done your own thing, which I don't know much about a story really, not as much as I'm sure both of you guys know. But like when you've done your own thing. Like you just do your thing. Oh, oh I well, can smoke. Wait, this is legal. Let me smoke it. And, that, that and was I agree a big with them. Fucking deal. And and I think it should be like. I mean, I I've said I've had this talk last time I was home with my family. They're like, because we're lo- we're in the middle of launch right now, and it's tough. We're in our first year, right? So yeah. I mean, you know, like yeah, everything's trending nice, but it's still costing me a fortune a month. Yeah. And you know, there's a there's an end to this. Well, and we're getting pretty low. Like it's got to do that little break even pretty damn soon. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And um, you know, I mean, I. I there's things I can, but I don't want to do. Um, sure. You know, I've got I'm 43. I don't want to start all over again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, I talked to my dad, and he was like, "What? What do you think? We, what would you do if this didn't work?" And I'm like, "I don't fucking know." I'm like, "I don't know if I could go in and take a job from somebody." Oh. I don't know if I could. Yeah. That'd yeah. Be rough. You would. like? He's like, "You've got so like my my mother said it. She's like, you got so many skills now with this online and e-commerce and yeah. this and building sites and." conversions and ROI and all this, you know, all the tech talk that I've learned in the past couple of years, plus the wellness side, my nutrition mm-hmm. degree, my life coaching. There's so many things. She's like, you'd be, you'd be a great grab for someplace. And I'm like, yeah, but then they'll tell me what to do. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm great whenever I'm great when I'm just flowing. Like sure. I'm, you know, when I just like, Hey Shane, boom, just run with it. I'll come back in a week and I'll have a whole different business for you guys to invest in. <laughs> yeah. Give me a week on and on. I'll be like, you know what? Straws yeah. made out of bamboo. Well, that's already been done. Genius. But you know, yeah. 
whatever. Yeah. You know? Definitely. Well, all right. So I, l- let's get to that a little bit. But yeah. but first, the five-minute rundown of <laughs> Toronto making a bunch of money, doing a bunch of coke, going to rehab, and then developing. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Did I just tell it? <laughs> no. The 20 seconds. So, 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 yeah. That's pretty good. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, 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 Shane, you had three nightclubs at one point or no i know you uh, had rehab five, five. five. yeah Jesus. so i had money purgatory g-spot casino lounge there no sorry 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 i had therapy lounge machine head money and purgatory four okay so you had four yeah four nightclubs simultaneously i'm sure tons of money uh we did well we yeah. did pretty good i mean it was it's a cash business it's funny a lot of people think the nightclub owners have a ton of like disposable income yeah we're we're kind of like european rich i used to joke this might be <laughs> might be not liked but, uh, <laughs> but i've got a lot of greek friends at home gus Trakopoulos is one of my best friends and and he used to always joke that you always know the greek guy in the room because he's got the same wad for 10 years <laughs> <laughs> right he's just he's got the thing yeah. he always pulls out the hundreds okay and he'll peel off a 20 and put it down but he never actually spends that whole wad <laughs> that's kind of like nightclub owners they okay. walk around high roll and you'll you've got enough to get the baddest car that's on but you're leasing that car every every okay. two years yeah. right it's like you'll go to the ferrari and be like i want the 458 and when the new 458 comes out i want that one keep one for me i have to have it first though yeah. Right. So it's a lot of bullshit stuff. Like, sure. A lot of and, show. And a lot of it. And I'm going to be really honest with you guys in Canada. Like I was always growing and I owned my buildings and I had real estate. So I was making mortgage payments and I, you know, and I made a lot of mistakes in the club business too. Like I hired a lot of people that I shouldn't have. And, and I had a Coke problem and an alcohol problem. So you couple that together with nights that turn into should be anybody average $200 night as a $10,000 night for no. me. Oh. Right. So. <laughs> Probably you hop on times planes a week. I <laughs> hop on planes, end up yeah. in Vegas, New Orleans, Bahamas, whatever, yeah. and it's all from it's all because you're fucking trashed, right? Yeah. And you're yeah. like, she's pretty Bahamas. Yeah, <laughs> I think I probably spent ten thousand of my life on, tr- <laughs> on trick. Maybe yeah. not even that. Yeah, yeah it was. I, I brought my whole team down to Mardi Gras one time, and we rented the whole top floor of the Ritz Carlton. That's how I actually met Kid Rock. Okay, was yeah. at that trip because he was in the room across from us, and we invited. This was actually this is a great story. I, you know, I'm, you we, know, I'm we've heard j- a little bit of the story. You know, I'm going to jump. Yeah, I want yeah. to tell you. <laughs> that, yeah. So the uh, I went, as soon as we arrived in New Orleans, I said to my team, and it was I said first thing, guys, safety deposit box, meet me there. Boom. Safe in the room. Everybody take your watches off. There is no time in New Orleans. You drink till you pass out. You wake up, Jesus. you drink till you pass out. Yeah. So if you're a lightweight and you can go from 9 a.m. till noon and you wake back up at 3 p.m., you start again at 3 p.m. You're on day two on sing- singular day. That might be right? me. That, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's my pat. Yeah. Right? In those days, we could go for actually my, my I had a good team. These guys could. We, I'm we, sure. We went like two days straight. Oh, yeah. Right? Plus, I was, you know, cokehead. So yeah. I, I could stay up for as long as. Of course. Yeah. I could stay up longer than the sun, literally. Yeah. yeah. You know, and stay up to see him the next day. <laughs> yeah. So we're in the hotel. And the first thing we did is I went down to the front desk and I said, I need 50 room keys. And they're like, pardon me. I'm like, I need 50 room keys. I got a lot of guys with me. Jesus. Right. And I walked up to the dudes and said, we're going to walk up and down the strip. Every <laughs> hot chick, you hand a key to and you say, party here tonight. Mardi Gras after party, Bourbon Street after party. Uh, hand the key to the room. Party here. It's a Ritz Carlton. It's yeah. got the penthouse on it. We're yeah. closing deals. Yeah. yeah. 50 girls bring in two or three friends each. 150 people oh. in, this, in this suite overlooking all of New Orleans. It's own private lap pool. Yeah. Badass party. Yeah. So we have this thing just hopping. I called the hotel. So I'm like, everybody get the cards out? They're like, yeah, all the keys are out. I'm like, perfect. Let's go back to the hotel. I call the hotel on the way back. I'm like, so I need a bar set up on the patio deck. Jeez. I need a band. I need a DJ. I need this. <laughs> fucking oh, yeah. Band. Literally, well, it's New Orleans. You get bands <laughs> everywhere. They're just coming off floats. They've just gone down the road on a trailer. Dude, you you just bring the trailer around. You can't just buy a speaker, <laughs> Shane. No, 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 no. You're going to do this. If you're going to throw a party, you're only as good as your last party thrown, <laughs> young man. Okay, sure. So make sure you throw a damn good one. So uh, anyway, so we get back to the room and like people start coming in. And it's it's a bender, dude. It's a good party and everyone's having their talk. It's New Orleans. It's Mardi Gras. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, I yeah. need to get into the, the, the visual details. You can imagine. Yeah. And I get a knock on the door. And this is when Cowboy had just come out, right? So, I'm a cowboy. Oh, like 90s, 90s or 2000-ish. Yeah, yeah, it was 96, I think. 90, okay. I bought 96, that 96, 97. CD. Yeah. You oh, know, yeah. he had the long hair and he wore the mink thing. He was like yeah. a kind of a redneck pimp. Yep. Yeah. Right? That was his look then. And he was rapping a little bit. And it was before Devil Without a Cause came out. Um, anyway, so he knocks on the door. And I knew the song, but he wasn't, he hadn't blown up yet. He wasn't like Bob Ritchie, Kid mm-hmm. Rock. He was like K to the I to the D. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, But I knew him. So I didn't know him. I knew who he was. I opened the door and I look at him. And I'm like, he's like, hey, man. He goes, you got a pretty good party going on here. Right? And I'm like, 
Yeah, I do. I'm like, you're not going to tell me to keep it quiet because I know who the fuck you yeah. are. Yeah. yeah. You're not the person who's like, no, bro, I'm thinking I might want to ah. slide in if that's cool. And I'm like, yeah. he goes, but, and I, I'll say part of this and you guys can weed yourself the expectations. <laughs> Um, and he had a girl with him who was currently married to another rock star. And that's all I'll say on that because the, the tabloids have done the rest. Yeah. And he's like, but I got this girl with me and, you know, we're not really supposed to be together. I don't think anybody will notice if we just slide in. You can't not notice this person that he was with. Yeah. Especially a bunch of Canadians. Uh, <laughs> right? yeah. So, yeah. So anyway. Oh, she, she is can, Canadian, huh? She is Canadian. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. She discovered at an Argos football game. Yeah. Literally the camera panned to her. And is like, that right? Picked her out of the audience. Yeah. Yeah. They must have been doing some kind of babe watch. Yeah. Type. Kissy cam. <laughs> yeah. Kissy cam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so that's how I met him. Um, so long and short. Yeah. So Toronto nightclubs, a lot of it's flash, man. A yeah. lot of it's flash. A lot of well, it's kind of like I mean, like any nightclub, right? Yeah. I mean, I assume it's similar to most bigger cities. It's it's all, it's it's just like a movie set. You know, everything is contrived to make you believe. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. And I didn't really know it then. I know it now. Yeah. Then I was like, oh no, I'm the tit. I'm you're, the fucking cat's it. ass. Yeah. I'm the man. Yeah, yeah. You know, like if I didn't have a hot car, my brother and my dad did, so I'd drive it down. <laughs> right? Like my dad had an Aston Martin. My brother had Vipers and Vets. My brother's been very successful, worked his ass off. My dad's been successful, and I was kind of the, what was the fuck up? So I just like, Clint, <laughs> can I borrow your car tonight? One of the cars at the shops? Like, yeah. You roll down a different exotic every night. Like, dude, Shane's crushing it. But that thing then feeds other things. People start yeah. saying, dude, I want to be around that guy because he's got it all. He's got it dialed in. Yeah. Right, and then one thing leads to another, and all of a sudden your clubs are popular because you're full of shit, which didn't work in my favor because, like I said earlier, I'm a people pleaser and I'm kind of sensitive, ironically, for all this other gregariousness, and well, I was really damaging myself. Yeah, I was really kicking the shit in my own self esteem, my own self worth because nobody never got to know me. Everybody knew the bullshit. Yeah, and if you love the bullshit, and I know that I'm propagating the bullshit, then my foundation of our friendship is built on the bullshit. So how could you ever like the real me? And I'll never fucking show you the real me either. Yeah, that's not going to happen because well, what if you don't, right? So yeah. for for ten years, you know, the nightclub business, I kind of beat the shit out of myself, uh, figuratively, emotionally, and spiritually. Um, and it was after I sold the nightclubs that I went to rehab. Uh, how I got there was. Four or five different steps, really. I've been thinking about it for about a year. I was really depressed for about a year and a half after mm -hmm. I sold the nightclubs. Identity's lost. You're not hot shit anymore. Uh-huh. <laughs> and um, uh, your I, phone's a little quieter. Everything's quieter, and you know, and and uh, and the drugs don't flow as fast, and the booze you got to start paying for <laughs> adds up. You know, a four hundred dollar drinking tab a night plus a four hundred dollar drug tab a night adds up real quick. <sighs> True. You know, we're not four hundred, but two hundred and twenty. That's an eight ball a day. So. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I did a lot of coke. Damn, a lot of coke. Not really proud of it, but I'm proud of. I'm proud to survive. I've got a good ticker. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> should be dead. Yeah, right. Um, there's there's purpose for that though. I mean, yeah. there's, what I'm doing now, and we'll get to that. Sure. Is is well, it, yeah. There's I mean, a reason I survived. Yeah. So because people with less ambition or less purpose are dead. Yeah, I believe that. Sure. I believe that wholly. And I'm sorry to anybody that's lost somebody. I'm really sorry. Um, but I think that I was saved because. I generally am a fucking great guy, and I don't mean that arrogantly. I mean that with my healthy ego, yeah. right? And I do love people, and I love bettering the environment around me, the people around me, and the pur purpose around me. There's nothing I get more gratitude for than helping out. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing nothing has value to me, even remotely as close as somebody saying, thank you, you changed that for me. Thank you, you helped me. That's the best currency I've ever had. Yeah. And I've learned that over the past couple of years. So I think that I was saved because the universe has a bigger plan for me. And, and I, it sounds cocky. And I've even had somebody say to me, like, hey, man, you really shouldn't say, like, you're like going to be like the ne next Gary Vee or, or to Tony Robbins. I'm not, I said, no, no, I'll be bigger than them. Sure. You know, because cause why, what are you going to aim for, like, right. the, ma the, right. the ant hill? Just be I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I'm going to climb that three foot wall over there. <laughs> right? Yeah. Watch me. Yeah, yeah nobody's going to watch that. Gives a shit. I'm going to climb the 35,000 foot wall. Watch sure. me. Sure. I'll get some way up. You know, still be, yeah. f and if nothing, it'll be hell fun to watch me wa watch me fall. <laughs> be hella fun. Yeah. So, um, so I was depressed for about two years, a year and a half to two years. I had a very bad relationship. I was in love with this woman, crazy love, like that drunken fueled love. Like, I mean, just infatuated with her, and she cheated on me a couple times. Um, and I was not a great guy. I'm not blaming all that at her feet. Uh, but that was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. It was very public that she'd been fooling around with a guy that was. Basically, I was, he was driving my car and I was helping pay his rent. Oh, damn. And, um, and, and that, that, that broke me to a different level. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if I've ever wholly re recovered from that. Yeah. Re seriously. Sure. Um, 
uh, that was it was humiliating. It was embarrassing, and it was after I had lost. I had sold all my nightclubs and properties, so I I had lost some piece of identity, and then that happened. I was like all these subconscious things of the falseness that bravado that I'd built up, the expectations propagated on the foundation of falsity, mm-hmm. right? Of lies and stuff. All of that was like, well, it's real then. Even she doesn't love me because I'm not a nightclub owner. So then that, boom, you know, just like fucking hammer yeah. you, hammer you down a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so then I used more and I partied more, uh, and I started doing, you know, whatever, um, just being reckless again, like even more reckless, like to the point that I was starting to black out. And one of the things that scared me the most, uh, I'm not proud of this, but I live in my truth and I'll always be honest with what my life was about and where it's going. Woke up in my bed in Unionville, went to sleep on my boat. Do not remember getting to the to and from. It's 40 miles apart. Damn. Like I remember going to, I remember driving home from a bar, stupidly drunk yeah. and high to my boat. And I was like, I'm only going a kilometer and a half. Canada, kilometers. Kilometer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's a 5K. Thank you. Thank you. you guys still use 5K yeah. to make it sound like you I walk know, longer. Right. When you do that, because yeah. it sounds longer than yeah. 2.6 miles, yeah. Yeah. right? Or 2.4 miles, yeah. whatever it is. Um, so I was like, uh, I actually knew the cop that was like, when I was pulling in the parking lot, the cop was like, where are you going, Shane? I'm like, just to my boat. He's like, all right, get home safe. Right? He's like, because I knew all 51 division at the time, which that wouldn't, that wouldn't happen today anyways. They'd be like, Griff, get the fuck out of the car. You're going to jail. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Right. So, but I went to bed in the boat. I woke up at home and I don't remember driving home. Damn, dude. And I'd never done that. Yeah. Like I've never that, that disrespect for that, that. I mean, it was, it's, it's foolish enough to what I did do to drive to the boat. Yeah. Uh, in a city congested. There's no excuse. It's fucking stupid. I'm trying to rationalize it. It's stupid. Yeah. Right. Um, so that was kind of trigger one with me. Trigger two was when I was in Greece. I had taken a girl to Greece who I was quite fond of, but she uh, she had, she made it very clear that we were going as friends, and I respect her for that. <laughs> I was a douchebag then. I thought, you know, like, hey, I'll show her a good time. We'll I got get your a friend. We'll get first class. Yeah, yeah, I got, yeah. I got, yeah. got your friend. We'll be right on a here. we'll be on a private yeah. jet in a, in a, in a five star <laughs> private suite. Yeah. You'll see what this life is like, baby. Yeah. You know, so fucking pathetic it really is to think that you. Well, we've been trying to train that way, I guess, from some of the people that I looked up to at that time that. You know, you can acquire people, which is really sad. And we can get into that politically with what's going on later um, in the world with all of us. Sure. Oh, the old white boys running yeah, the world. Yeah, we were talking about that yeah. a little briefly earlier. Yeah. You know, like kind of fucked things up pretty bad, people. We got a lot of apologizing to do. We, uh, then you pay for the sins of your father, sadly. Yeah. And that's the way it's going to be. Anyways, um, so in Greece, uh, the one thing she asked me not to do, and I'll, I'll give you a little preface to the story. So we all know Conor McGregor today. Mm-hmm. Conor McGregor can be Conor McGregor because of the brand of Conor McGregor and because he's built up that expectation of him, him of, of craziness and grandeur. Yeah. Well, That's if you showed up to my boat like Conor McGregor <laughs> today with no paparazzi not yeah. being Conor McGregor, I think you're fucking crazy. Yeah. Right? I kind of dressed and acted that way. Like, I was really loud and like, shit. <laughs> you know? So I showed up to this little village in Greece in like a, I think it was an AMG Mercedes, gullwing door. There's Jeez. donkeys in the town. Like it was her family's <laughs> village. We're going to her family's village for a couple of days first, right? yeah. and then we're going off on the luxurious trip. And I'm like, yeah, we'll go see your family. Is there, what can I rent there? She's like, there's a castle. I'm like, I'll rent the castle. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm, when I say douchebag, I seriously mean this. People, I was a fucking douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> I made my bones about it, and I've apologized for it. I'm a better person now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but sadly, at the time, that's what I thought. You know, you do right. You show up, and you got to make because I was insecure. Uh huh. Right. I was, yeah, but I mean. <laughs> And honestly, like running a castle does sound cool as shit. Does sound cool. It it does. I mean, I'm going to take a lesson. Rent a castle. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll go. You'll appreciate, you'll appreciate you can appreciate impress it. the shit out of us. To rent a castle. So showed up in this town, AMG. Get out with the white loafers, which I still have here. Actually, ah, nice. Um, and you know, kick them off. Kick them. Uh, she asked. I'll get speed up the story because this will go on for four years. Um. <laughs> She said, do me one favor, please don't drink and drive in the town. We know everybody. I'm like, absolutely. So we all went to dinner. In Europe, they kind of drink at around 11 o'clock on. Right? <sighs> they have dinner with water, and they drink at like, eat dinner at like 9.30, 10.30. Yeah. And after dinner, they'll have a little something, and then they'll go out to the disco, right, about 12.31. Okay. So I go out to the beach that day, and I start drinking at the beach. And then I go to dinner. I'm drinking just, at dinner. Just by yourself? Or well, with no, with, with the group okay. people. I'm but just you're, carrying around a six-pack of beer, right? Yeah. Or whatever. I had some Jagger with me or something, right? And, I mean, that's what we do in North America. If you're going to the beach today, you bring your coolies, sure. right? So I'm like, oh, we're going. I'm on vacation, right? Yeah. Uh, went from there to the dinner. By the end of the dinner, I was smashed. So I looked at her and I said, I'm just going to go back to the, the castle <laughs> and sleep. She's like, okay, no problem. So I'm being the responsible guy. Yeah. I woke up at around 1.30 from that 11 o'clock nap. And I felt great. And I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to the club. Right? 
So I walk downstairs to the cabs. I'm like, can you get me a cab? They're like, oh, no cabs. I'm like, well, where's the club? They're like, oh, the other side of the village. Like, yeah, get me my car. So I felt fine. I wasn't fine. Yeah. I drove to the club. I still hit. This is the problem. I hid it from her. I parked around the corner from this outdoor, and this thing was like, it was like an amphitheater. It was all open. You walked through these like stone, looked like you're walking into a house, but there's no back walls or roof. Mm -hmm. So I walked down and, and, you know, the party's happening and I grab a table and get bottles, which they didn't need. Again, (laughs) douchebaggery. Like they were all having fun at the bar by themselves, but Shane shows up, so we must get VIP service now. Like nobody had, I made them put together a VIP area. There wasn't one. Exactly. Seriously, it's embarrassing. I, um, it's cringeworthy, Shane. It is. It is. I'm like, I'm like, hey guys, let's fuck. I need a VIP. They're like, oh, a VIP uh, table, chairs, perfect. Bring yeah. all the bottles. Yeah. You know. Um, and at the end of the night, uh, it was about four or five in the morning. She's like, hey, we're gonna go to the beach, watch sunrise. I'm like, great. I'll meet you there. Let me go home and get changed real quick, and then we'll, I'll sleep at the beach and during the day type thing. Uh, and she asked me, and she goes, you didn't drive here, right? I'm like, no. Yeah. Well, I wrecked the car on the way home. Damn. And they watched the car wreck. Damn. Went around the back of the club, went off the road, hit the A-post, fractured my orbital, <sighs> fractured two ribs, uh, broke my nose. Uh, so this whole side of my face was mangled. Yeah. The car was still able to drive, so I got it back up the gully, brought it back to the castle, parked it in its spot, and I went in and passed out. Right, passed out in the bed. She kicked in the door several hours later, going like, what the fuck happened? And she looked at me, I don't know where this came from. I think I've told you guys this story before. I don't know where the fuck it came from. I'm like, I got carjacked by Albanians. <laughs> She's like, Shane, we watched it. That's so dumb. <laughs> so yeah. Drunk, yeah. St- in shock. Yeah. Um, and she uh, and she just looked at me and she goes, Shane, we watched the car go off the road. Like, Jesus. you know, I asked you one thing. She goes, you lied to me? And she actually saved my life because she said to me, I think you're a great guy. I've seen a glimmer of um, epicness in you. She goes, but I didn't sign up for this, and I won't go on the rest of the trip with you. So have a good time. Damn. And she stayed in the village with her family. And at yeah. first, I was all pissed off at her. But I had two weeks to sit in a country where I don't speak the language, in these private island resorts. Uh, yeah. To really think about life. Yeah. And that's where I decided to go to rehab. And then it took a couple of those steps to get there. My brother found out I wanted to go when I got back to Toronto, and he made arrangements for a private jet and and didn't tell me anything about it. Just kind of got me together with him. And he's like, "Hey, man," he goes. We can agree. His story, I like the way he said it. He said, so you left a company that was doing X millions a year to go start nightclubs. And we thought you're crazy. Dad and I. And yeah. Was, and then you became one of the largest nightclub owners in Canada, or in Toronto at least. And he said, so we can assume that you're not totally stupid. <laughs> All right. And he goes, you might be, but you did proof. The evidence shows us that you're not. Yeah. Right. I think you're an idiot, he said, but the evidence <laughs> shows me that you're not totally yeah, stupid. Yeah, yeah. And he said, so I hear you think you have a problem. You probably do. If you can figure out and navigate the hospitality business the way you have with criminals and gangsters and yeah. bikers, he goes, e- you probably have a problem. Yeah. So he was like, hey, here's a one-time deal, bud. I love you. You're my little bro. I got a plane waiting at the airport. It's going to take you somewhere if you want to go, go. If not, I'll never bring it up again. This isn't an ultimatum. It's not I love you or don't love you. You want to go, go. You don't want to go, don't go. Yeah. Up to you. And the only thing that he did mention to me, which scared the shit out of me, he said, the only thing is now that I am aware that you think you have a problem, I'll be less likely to have you take care of my daughters whenever sure. I'm out of town. Um, they probably won't be staying on Uncle Shane's boat when you're going out because I don't want them around drugs if there's stuff. If that's happening in your life, you'll see them supervise with me, almost like a custody thing. Yeah. And I love my little girls. I mean, they're the world to me. I don't have my own kids, and I've got two little boys from my brother got remarried and, and Nancy, and she was there too, and those little boys were in, the, in our life at that time. And uh, anyways, I got to go to rehab. After rehab... Went back to Toronto, earned a couple degrees, one uh, coactive life coaching and applied holistics nutrition degree and a registered orthomolecular health practitioner degree. Um, f- ball, uh, the life coaching was a six-month program. I did that on weekends. And then the schooling was uh, two 18-month programs I did simultaneously, basically. Okay. Um, and did days, nights, and weekends. Uh, nothing goes slow with me. I try to get done <laughs> fast. Yeah. And um, <laughs> then I moved to California. Yeah. Uh, shortly thereafter to actually work in the addiction field, to work with people in rehab, uh, become a life coach and, and, and be a, a sense of motivation or inspiration. I, I, I understood uh, all, obviously all the flaws of my previous life, um, got real truthful about the douchebaggery, yeah. um, the insecurity, the self-worth, and realized that this is not, uh, this is not unique to me. Um, addicted or not, everybody's got a layer of this in them. It's part of our human DNA. Sure. You you don't feel 
we, especially in today's world, we've got so many comparisons that we don't feel adequate often enough. We feel less than more than we feel of than, you know, hmm. just yeah. by, by today's standards. Because and even if you're really, really grounded and you're really, 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 you know, got it together. Even in the wellness community, for instance, where it's all like yogis, you know, it's everything's peace, love, and harmony, uh, <laughs> right? But then there's that one girl that's crushing it on, on, on Instagram because she's a yogi. And the other yogi girl who's peace, love, and harmony, and they're all supposed to be embracing, it's still competitive. Yeah. Right? If it's in or a studio. So even in these these spaces that are harmonious, there's there's competitiveness. No question. And, and you feel athletes everywhere. Look around. The world mm -hmm. is a competitive place. And I think that's really tempered our, our egos. I think that's really beaten us up a lot. Um, I know it did me, and I was in a world that I created. My bubble, I I, I blew the bubble around me, right? <laughs> yeah. And But there's other people that don't have that option, and they have the, the same. I, I just see it. It's like it's like Matrix to me. Like I can look at somebody and go like, ah, oh, fuck, I get it, bro. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what you're thinking. Like I, empathy and I to, like let's fix this. You know, so I really love that aspect of it. And when I moved out here, that's what I really wanted to do. Uh, I got involved in the the addiction coaching world, and I was collecting payments for my services. And that was great. But huh. I did have some people that didn't succeed. And in the addiction community, you have a large percentage that don't succeed. Sure. And I took that right in the head. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, and they're paying you. Is that what you mean? Yeah I, yeah, I don't have thick enough skin to see other people fail that I'm involved with. I hate it. I hate sure. watching people fail. Um, I don't mind failing. I, I'm, I'm a huge failure, <laughs> you know. I, and, and, and but that, we're, uh, yeah, we're, go ahead, go ahead. Never mind. So you know, but that's allowed me to teach back, kind of like if you don't fail, you can't learn, and da da da. But not everybody has to fuck up as much as I did or on such grand scales with different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like almost kill yourself several times over to learn. Maybe I shouldn't drink that much. <laughs> You know, yeah. like that wasn't a tough lesson. Probably the first time I rode a car off drunk driving Jesus. should have been the sign, not yeah. the 12th yeah. or whatever yeah. time it was. Um, so that's what I moved out here for. And I just got tainted by it. I didn't like it. I did, I, I'd much rather just do it for free, but I need to live. And you're still doing it. I still do it. Yeah. Yeah. So you were telling us earlier. I still coach. I've got probably six people that I'm coaching right now. Oh, cool. It's, uh, it's word of mouth. You know, like I got yeah. one. I, a lot of people. It's weird. It's, it's, it's tremendously flattering and it's also kind of hilarious because i've got about six people in my hometown of unionville that are sober that say we watched you do it and we didn't know it could be done because our town of unionville is highly drinking town mm -hmm. okay. canada's a big drinking country is it yeah yeah union oh yeah big drinking like we it's I feel like it's similar to the midwest like Cleveland, from yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's cold or yeah, just our, our beer sports, actually has the drink, good, right, good right, alcohol right. rate. What are you talking about? <laughs> what, what's what's the one good Cleveland syrup, one we got now? Syrup in it. Uh, Great Lakes. <laughs> Great Lakes. Great, Great Lakes. Lakes. Good yeah. brewery. Yeah, Christmas. That's now. about it, though. Great Lakes Brewery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Great Lakes Brewery. I know that brewery. Yeah, I think I've had their beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. I'm pretty sure I have. Yeah. Pretty good. Got a good pilsner. Anyways, um, so uh. Uh, Unionville, uh, six or seven people are sober there, and the, and it kind of a little little chain reaction. Sure. And I've gotten a lot of credit from these people privately, which is amazingly flattering. The best story I have is one of my one of my good friends from high school calls me up, and this guy's super successful, great guy, um, loved by all, just a great great guy. Yeah. And just like all my other friends, goes to a hockey game and gets shit canned. Takes <laughs> a cab home and passes out, and he's got an amazing wife. She doesn't, she know he's he provides well. He's not a drunk to her. Doesn't beat her. Isn't a dick. Um, but he had this, uh, he had this little baby boy, and he said to me, calls me, he's like, hey Griff, he goes, I got a little issue going on. I go, what's that? He goes, well, I think I need to quit drinking. I'm like, well, you probably do that. <laughs> yeah. It's come to the point that <laughs> yeah. you're thinking about it. Yeah. You know, it took me two years to figure it out. If you're just thinking that now, jump right yeah, on the train, bro. It. And he's like, he goes, and he, the two things that were funny about it. He said. Well, I was really thinking, you know, if you can, fuck, I can. <laughs> <laughs> right? and, and he's just that, like, great guy. His backhanded compliment. It was. It, yeah. Like, I mean, if you can, yeah. I don't know if that's because I'm so ill-equipped or, or because my whole life was such in shambles. <laughs> sure. But he's like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can. Like, fuck, I got a career and kids <laughs> yeah. and a family. Yeah. I got I got reasons to be sober. Yeah, you were just yeah. a drunk party guy. Yeah. You had no reason, yeah. you know? Like, you were just still, you were, you know, you didn't have a re Like, I had a dog, you know? I love my dog. I got sober with my dog. <laughs> You know, so um, so anyways, he uh, he's been sober two years now, cool. but but you know we talk once in a while, and then I like to I I do pro bono work, um, 
every Tuesday I try to do something for charity or a charity or my own. So I, I coach the four people, four to six people, depending on the schedules of people and how the, well they're doing. Six on my roster, four are active right now. Let's put it that way. That's cool. Um, and I talk to them every Tuesday and go through what their emotions are and what's happening with them. Um, and it's just frank talk. It's kind of like what we're doing here. I'm a storyteller. You guys know that. Everything's a story. Yeah. This podcast could be six you're, hours if you wanted it to be. It very easily could be. Yep. You're, yeah. But you're a great storyteller. Yep. You guys say I that. I appreciate that. Of it. I've always got a thing in the back of my head that I'm talking too much because I've, <laughs> driven my, well, I've driven my parents crazy. They've had to deal with this their whole fucking life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, like, every time I start talking, my mother's like, you are relentless. You just don't stop. I'm like, Mom, fuck. Some people like it that don't know me, okay? Like, yeah. you just, just yeah, right. fucking leave the room. I guess maybe it was every day. I'll maybe. pull the car over. You can get out. Yeah, Like, yeah, yeah. I, nobody's asking you to stay yeah. here sometimes, you yeah. know? And I love my mom. But every once in a while, it's like, Mom, I get it. Sorry. Hey, fuck, it's your fault. Sorry, you yeah. raised me. Yeah. yeah. You know, you did this. Yeah, you did this. To I, you. I blame. I blame it. I give it. It's yeah. all your fault. You yeah. guys did a terrible job. So I'm a mess. <laughs> Fucked up. It's all your fault. No, it's not. It's my well, choices. Yeah. So, so, all right. So, so you're still working with those people, but let's talk about your current biz and yeah. Vitamin Patch Club. So, you, you start a Vitamin Patch Club and, and, oh shit, mine, mine's gone. I think. Your watch? No. <laughs> no, my watch is fine. Oh, I thought your watch went out. I hope Bronx what? didn't eat it. He might. It's good. He was fun. licking. So, Shane, for those of you not seeing us, Shane has a dog in, yeah. the, bo- in the boat with us, was licking oh. my hand earlier. Here, I'll just vitamin. open up another pack for you, buddy. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yes. Vitamin Patch Club. Uh, so, there you go. Patches. Um, transdermal vitamins. Exactly. The, the so, be- easiest and best way to explain it, think of nicotine patch. Yeah. Take out the nicotine, put in vitamins. Sure. Simple. Simple. A to B. Makes sense. Yeah. So you, you started this a year and a half ago? Yes. Maybe. I'll get yeah. it. Yeah. Get it. yeah. You probably yeah. started the transformation about a year and a half ago, right? Research and all Yeah. That stuff. It was right after. So I had a, you guys know my other business that I had, which is still operating in Canada called Whole Life Balance. Mm-hmm. And I was closing the studio out here. Uh, it just doesn't do them well. Truth is. The sign's still up there. This, I know the sign is by like the building like two weeks ago. Yeah. freaked me out. Yeah. Um, I was closing it. I was feeling rough about it. Life sucks. Lost a bunch of money. For about a week, I didn't leave my apartment. That's why you got to give it a little press down for like two seconds. Let that adhesion sink in. There you go. You're good. Locked he, and loaded. He just got one of those bodies that things don't stick to. Yeah, like I guess mm-hmm. water off a duck's ass with him. Well, he's probably lotioned up, lathered up with some uh, coconut oil. It's on the oil. back of my elbow somehow. Yep. Wow, dude! See, that's it's wow. the magic patch. Yeah, it appears where you need it most. Yeah, I'll we'll put it there. Um, yeah, I was closing my store and I was feeling miserable at life. I stayed in for like uh, a week. I didn't leave my apartment and I was feeling sorry for myself. And I gave myself a little life coaching. I'm like, okay, well, what would you tell yourself if you're a client? Mm-hmm. Uh, get your ass up, get back in the gym, start eating healthy again, stop shaving. <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. Stop shaving. That's good. Yeah. Um, and uh, I went to the store to quit smoking. Which I finally have done, boys. Nice, nice. good. Uh, I didn't I hate then. That shit. I didn't then. Right. Uh, I drove. I rode my bike to the store to get uh, Chantex, which is a medicated s- uh, smoking cessation aid, and um, they wouldn't allow me to write my own prescription. Uh, so <laughs> it, apparently, that's illegal. Um, <laughs> didn't know that. Interesting. My partner was a doctor. I had a I had a uh, script pad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So uh, I was like, yeah, just. Chantex. I'm not asking for opioids. I'm like, <laughs> fucking quit smoking. <laughs> Give me something to quit smoking. I need to quit smoking right now. Yeah. Right? Everything's right now. It was 11 o'clock at night, and the lady said, look, why don't you just try nicotine patches? I'm like, all right, fine. Where are they? And she's like, you know, <laughs> stomping my feet. She brings me down to the aisle, and in the aisle, the nicotine patches were here, and above them was B12 pills. So when she reached down, huh. she grabbed the nicor- Nicorette thing, and she's like, here you go. And I literally saw through it. Like, it was like it went, this became, the nicotine patch yeah. became translucent and i went through and i was like why don't we do those with vitamin patches like why aren't why don't we do that with vitamins what why, why w- yeah and she looked at me and she goes uh, i don't know and i go like well, we should be and she's like we probably should i'm like i gotta fucking go <laughs> so i left and i started doing the research did you get the it. nicotine i didn't no i didn't, didn't even do it them. no you, i didn't even buy just, them. it sparked the idea and you it was out. gone it was gone i it would seems very shane like yeah, yeah 70, yep. squirrel yeah, yeah. 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 right <laughs> So <laughs> we got to do this. Yeah, then, totally. then you're up till five in the morning writing yeah. some shit out. 72 hours. 72 yeah. hours straight. No sleep. Yeah. Um, and that's that's actually where the beard started growing. Nice. I just like I just didn't have time. I was like, I was fascinated by fascinated with it on a couple things. Molecularly, how our bodies absorb things. I had no idea that we could absorb 90 percent with with 90 percent efficiency through our pores. Yeah, I had no idea. Like, why? So how are you? How uh, when you're doing that? Wait, all right, so you, you got the idea, yeah, and and then, you're, like you said, the ninety ninety percent, like you didn't know that shit. Are you starting to do research on it? Yeah, or absolutely. Just, first first I, thing I did was I googled 
nicotine patches technology. Okay, so you're doing it through there. Yeah, I Googled nicotine yeah. patch technology, and then the word transdermal came up. And the word topical came up. Okay. And I looked at both. Topical patches are technically what these are. Okay. I love the term transdermal. They're made the same way. The only thing that transdermal, we say we use transdermal technology for legality reasons. Okay. Transdermal means the application of medication or a controlled substance through a patch. Okay. Topical means something that is over the counter, which mm. is a vitamin. Oh, hmm. So, okay. but topical never sounded, it sounds like you're going on vacation. Mm -hmm. Tropical, topical. It just never, I didn't <laughs> like it. Topical okay. creams. Mm -hmm. I always I've, I've Lotions, put, I put those creams, with like yeah. ML, MLMs. Yeah. In my yep. head, there's a constraint that it doesn't work. Topical didn't seem real. Tra transdermal yeah. seems real. It's the same technology, but I can't call it a transdermal patch. I say we use transdermal technology, and that's our little loop around. Sure. Which is legal. So... <laughs> You know <laughs> that face. Says, I just says, says my attorney. I just it says my yeah. attorney. It says my COO is yeah. an attorney. David, yeah. reply to that one, David. Yeah. <clears throat> so you, um, you 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 figure that out. You see that now. Where are you going from there? Are right you... right from there, I went to the uh, the archives for the uh, Department of Health, the Department of Health um, Science Tech website, which is uh, NSTABB or something like that. Yeah. Um, and that and then in there they've got every scholarly written and published report started doing the research on transdermal applications and is there testing and the efficiency and does it work and can it work with supplements and there's a ton 1800 studies that are showing that the efficiency is better i'm like well why the fuck hmm. isn't this being done so i think production well it probably cost too much how much can a pill cost we know pills are on a quarter fractions of a penny excuse me to manufacture i'm like so on my product probably gonna be like 200 bucks who's gonna buy 200 dollars worth of 30 days not gonna happen so I called uh, a friend in Toronto. He used to work for 3M. Mm -hmm. And I said, get me a contact for somebody in your, um, in your uh, ph pharmaceutical division in the U.S. And there's a place in Wisconsin, 3M's largest pharmaceutical division. I got in touch with the VP and I said, hey, I want to build a vitamin patch. He says, oh, that's a great idea. We'd love uh -huh. to do that. Um, tr 3M manufactures FDA-approved products, which means their process of manufacturing is several, several, several checks and balances in it, which <sighs> means a tremendous cost. And they and they, way too slow for Shane. Yeah, <laughs> and and uh, and we don't require FDA passability with with vitamins. Sure. Um, so what he said, Shane, we can make it. There's no problem, but it's going to be like eight dollars a patch. Oh my god! To make. That's that's not me selling it. Yeah, yeah. Right? I'm like eight times thirty. I'm like, oh fuck. I said with markup. I mean, even if I get to shit margins, I'm like, oh okay, so it's not proper. I said it's got to be another way. So then I looked at some of their competitors. I ordered every competitor that was out there. There was other companies doing this. I ordered uh, from the medicinal ones. The ones with with herbs. Did he leave? No. Okay, just check and see if my dog left the boat. Mm. <laughs> um, dog left the gate open. He won't. Um, anyways, I I. I Ordered all of our our competitors' products. Um, I sent them to universities to get them studied um, to determine if they were doing them correctly. How do you do that? Like, I, I, if I was going to send us uh, to a university to get it stud uh, studied on, so how I do reached you do it? out What's to USC first. You guys talk. UCLA. I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. You got it. Okay. Reached out to USC, UCLA, got their pharmacology department. Uh, found somebody that was in their fourth year doing thesis work or paper that needed to have something to be studied. Okay. Um, and then I, I paid a little bit too. Okay. You can have them do you, it. You pay the student or the school? I paid the school. Okay. Right? Because I wanted it fast-tracked. Otherwise, you get put in a list. Gotcha. Right? So basically... I'm do sure it. a lot of people want access to stuff like that. Because it's yeah. free studies, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and mine was just to, to dissect what they were doing. And I found out a lot of shit on yeah. my competitors. And I won't publish it. And I don't care to. I'm not going to bash anybody. Um, I don't need to bash anybody because our product is far superior because yeah. I learned that. Right? I learned about the uh, polyacetate adhesive, what kind of adhesive to use. Um, they were using a different kind, which actually holds the nutrients harder so that it, it doesn't, it's doesn't, s one of them sticks too much. One of them doesn't stick enough, which means the nutrients don't fall. One of them doesn't have enough water solubility. One of the patches that we tested actually had caffeine in it, which gave people their B12 jolt, mm -hmm. which I thought was actually s disgusting. People were doing that because they were marketing it as a B12 patch and had caffeine in it. And it was like, oh, that gets in a jolt of energy. I'm like, yeah, because it's not, B12 is not supposed to give you energy. Yeah. Energy is a byproduct of having B12. B12 helps fats and carbohydrates break down your body, which turn into energy. Mm -hmm. So when you put something on people, and we have customers all the time going, I put it on, I didn't feel anything. I'm like, good. Yeah, it's not like drinking a Red Bull. No, <laughs> yeah, it's really. like it's, it's yeah. time released, and over the next week, you should just notice that you're more energetic. I'm telling you, 
you guys know me. I'm animated at best, mm -hmm. right? That's who I am. But I know for a fact, like I'm doing this back to basics program right now. You guys have probably seen yeah. it. I've started training again, started eating right again. And my workouts are 10 times where they were two years ago. And I'm just doing it solo mission, just me. Like yeah. I don't have trainers or anything. I just said on my birthday, I decided two things. One, I needed to quit smoking officially. So I set a timeline. Uh, which I've quit um, 30 days in now, 34 days. Nice. None, none who's counting. <laughs> I count that. Um, the The first month, I, if you look in the fridge, everything's organic and natural. I cook everything on the boat. One meal a day, no matter what, on the boat. One smoothie a day, no matter what, on the boat. Lunch, snacks, outside of the boat, no problem. So it's a regulated, but not a crazy regulated. Yep. I still eat out once a week, twice a week at a restaurant, and I go whatever the fuck I want. Uh -huh. Steak, put the truffle butter on, load it up. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I don't take it too serious. But... Um, that, a lot of that's from the B12 that I've got all this energy and working out. And then the next thing was I'm, now I'm on the workout schedule. And so combining those three things together, we'll see what I look like at the end of end of November because that's my goal. I've got a goal of getting down to 12% body fat again. That's, I've already seen your before and afters for yeah. the last, what was it, a 30-day? 30 30, yeah, yeah, it was Jack Shane. Yeah. 31 days. Sexy Shane is what I was calling yeah. it. Yeah. Sexy yeah. Shane. Yeah. Also, also Sexy Shane driving to Nashville and back. So like not... You yeah, know, like you, you have I don't know if yeah. you're working out on the, on the trips. I did. I did. Well, my, I knew so, you did in Nashville, but like at, oh, in no, on the, Kansas on the, City. I didn't. I didn't work out on the trips. So I kind of said I wanted to build. It's a part of my schedule is I've learned a lot of things about addiction and recovery. And I knew I needed to quit smoking. So one of the reasons, one of the reasons, ironically, that I went to Nashville was to quit smoking. I mean, it sounds crazy. But Just I knew that if out. I was gone for 30 days in somebody's home that I was not allowed to smoke in. Yeah. I didn't have a set routine. Like I used to wake up on the boat and my ashtray is here. Mm -hmm. My phone's charging here. And I get up and I grab the phone, I grab a butt. It's routine, yeah. right? Break the routine, you got to break the mold. So just like I went to rehab and I constituted or instituted a different constitution in my life, I did the same thing. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get up and instead of having to smoke, I'm going to throw on the shittiest pair of pants I got and go right to the fucking gym. Yeah, yeah. Right? I'm going to work out for an hour, an hour and a half. And you forget to have your smoke. And it's the same thing with drinking. Uh, you know, I've said this, my CEO laughs all the time because it's the simplest thing. People are like, how do you quit smoking? Or how do you quit drinking? I don't order one. Yeah. If I don't have the first, I won't have the next 20. I remember right. you saying that, saying that before. It's the simplest thing. So with the cigarettes, it's like, I can't have a puff. I can't have Just one. Just don't do it. Just can't. Yeah. So again, yeah, the first three days, driving in a car with two dogs and, and uh, a, a team member from my company, probably a little irritable. Yeah. <laughs> you know, probably yeah. was. But then you're also driving through friggin' United States. I went yeah. to Grand Canyon. How can you be mad at the Grand Canyon? Yeah. You can't be mad at the Grand Canyon. Yeah. You can't be angry in that place. You can't yeah. be frustrated or agitated. Yeah. You could probably detox in the Grand Canyon and not have detox issues i mean it's just spectacular so research universities did the study on it and then i had to find suppliers and that was challenging we've had a lot of fuck-ups along the way met with one supplier and this was interesting so a guy down in san diego i called him up and i'm like hey i said you manufacture patches i said well this is what i'd like and i had no idea what we could put in them at this point what the the limitations were mm -hmm. i'm like i would like to do a multivitamin i'd like it added up to be 112 milligrams of nutrients right um, he's like, yeah, no problem. We can make that for you. I'm like, great. So I go, how big will the patch be? He goes, well, what size do you want them? I said, well, doesn't it make a difference with what's in them? He goes, no, no, we'll make them any way you want. Huh. I, I wasn't born yesterday. Yeah. You know, but I'm like, well, how does that work? That Because you got only this much space. Uh huh. If the patch only weighs 20 grams, 20 milligrams, how do you have 120 milligrams of stuff in it? So I found that he manufactures one of my competitors, oh, and they just mislabel uh, it. They just don't care because it's unregulated. Yeah. So I was like, "All right, well, no, you're not the guy I'm going to work with. <laughs> yeah, no, your your efficacy is in the shitter." So um, and, and and I found this great company in North Carolina that I invested in, um, and they're a manufacturer of transdermal technology. He actually started out with uh, with if you believe it's making roofing tape. Huh. Mm. All right. So he's an adhesion company. Sure. And um, I got together with him. I love the family. Love the guy that runs it. Great guy. Um, Army vet or Army reservist. Uh, just has that North Carolina kind of just good. We know that. Yep. Shake, shake Been there for a handful of years. Shake yep. your hand and, and yeah, I'll get it done. Yeah. If I can't get it done, I'll tell you. And I'll tell you your face if it's going to be late and I'll tell you why. Uh -huh. right, which is so no refreshing. Because we live, we, we yes. live, you, you know where we live. The yeah. bullshit capital of the world. Yeah. Yeah. So that was refreshing to me. So, all right, so you started the biz. Let's talk a little bit about, like, problems and issues because we know, I mean, we've talked to you before. There's been some great, there's been some not so great yeah. things with the biz. And you've, you've, it's probably been harder, too, because you've been in a successful biz before. And now you just start from scratch this thing that 
we had never heard of it. Of course, you had some competitors and half competitors, yeah. so it's out there, but we'd never heard of it before. So it's not like it's a brand new. Uh, um, it's a new category. It's still sure. be, it'd be considered a new category. Okay, it's a yeah. new space on a shelf. It was retail. It's yeah, not like there's there's there. It's not toothpaste. Right? Yeah, you know, right. it's like whenever gel the little weird jelly ones came out. Colgate <laughs> already had space there. Yeah, right. So they modified Just their brand. Different ish. Yeah. Um, Hurdles. First thing, uh, any advice I can give to anybody, and this is the hardest one for me to get and take and accept and do because I've been successful, because I've got enough, I've got equity and I can afford to outsource. Fucking don't. Yeah. My first advice is when you're starting something new, just the way we target people to buy our product based on our demographics, the minute you Google how do I start a company, as an example, every asshole that wants to take your money to tell you how to start a company who doesn't own a fucking company is going to be in your inbox. Uh-huh. And the biggest thing that I learned was shut the fuck up, put your face into your computer and do it yourself. At least understand it enough and attempt it. So like building the website, me, how much is going to cost to build a website? I'll go to these guys. I called people of mine, friends of mine that had done this before who had these great companies that were selling 40, 50, 60 million. I'm like, who built your website? These great guys in check. All right, give me the check or the... Wherever the fuck they were. Yeah. Right? And <laughs> Not them. Yeah. It was, I had two different developers. We had, we had and, and. I think you had more than that. Well, you, I've you've gone had a couple through, headaches. I've gone yeah. through four or five. Yeah. And, and I am demanding. Don't get me wrong. Like, sure. it, I'm not fucking easy to work with. But at the same time, I know what I want. And I know other people have it. I didn't create a new web. It's not a new. You didn't yeah. create the internet. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm like, you guys, I want it to look like yeah. this guy's site that works. Right. This company that's yeah. crushing it in the UK that I know, I've well, I've I've bought product. I love their customer experience. Take that and make one for VPC. Oh, that's like eight months. Oh, fuck you, you're eight months. You know, so they're so, and 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 we're all afraid of coding and all that because I'm not a website developer. I'm not a developer programmer. Uh, so Shopify, boom, saved me everything. Saved me Shopify. So, sh- Shopify saved me probably another hundred thousand dollars in oh. development costs, and I was already eighty thousand in. I built our website in a week. Our yeah. website that we're using now that's functioning. Yeah. That, that was supposed converting. to be eight months yeah. and you would have paid a bunch of money yeah. for it. And I'd already spent six or seven months going through three developers and, and developers that. are much like custom home renovators. You bring yeah. one plumber in to start a job and totally. then bring another plumber in to finish, the other plumber was an asshole and did it wrong. And how the who the fuck are you to and argue? You, I don't know, Cole. You don't have an totally. idea. No, and and also, it's, they're going to tell you it's going to be two months and it's going to take three months and it's going to be more money than they initially exactly. quote you. Uh-huh. Yeah, and so time is everything. So that that's the one issue. The other one is um, fucking turn off your ears to everybody else's advice, hmm. unless yeah. they're a mentor or a trusted person who's involved in it from ground up with you. Um, you ever had co- somebody come into your house and say and and watch you do something that they have no real idea what you're doing? And say, you know what I'd do if I were you? You're not fucking me. Fuck off. <laughs> I don't mean have more blunt yeah. because I've sat and I've gotten I've gone to masterminds. Uh-huh. And and you know and and some of them have been great. Don't get me wrong. Sure. I've met a lot of douchebags at them too. Oh, sure, um, like worse than I ever was because these guys are sober fucking you, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like yeah. like at least I at least I was weak and insecure and you know I still gave you your booze to have a good time in my facade of a nightclub. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We did provide some entertainment, you know, um, but these guys are just to your face assholes. Like they're I walked into the one mastermind and the guy I only knew him for like five minutes. Five minutes, didn't know anything about our product. He goes, you need to do a magnesium patch. Huh. I'm like, yeah, it's a good idea. He goes, no, you need to do one right now. I said, do you know if it absorbs? He goes, it doesn't matter. You need to get it figured out. I'm like, well, I don't know if magnesium absorbs. The skin huh. the skin pores have to be less than 700 Dalton to be able to absorb. I don't know if magnesium is above 700 Dalton or less than 700 Dalton. It might not be able to be done. right? And it, it can, in fact, be done. And we are going to be doing it. Cool. We're doing yeah. a magnesium potassium. But he, patch, he didn't know. But he didn't know. It was like yeah. the first thing. He didn't even look at my other fucking problems. It probably was magnesium. the approach of, it, of him too. He just came in like, ah, you should do this. It, it was It was, It was. was so kind. I'm like, you don't even know what the fuck. Maybe, what if I'm selling only to people that have um, uh, lap band surgery that don't require magnesium because they can absorb it through their lap band surgery? He doesn't even know what my business sure. model was. Right. Yeah. Didn't know that I was selling who I was selling to. Anyway, so there was that one guy and I just kind of always put up rough spot in my mouth I was like fuck you yeah you know don't tell me how to run my business though I didn't even ask you by the way <laughs> you know what I mean like at least let me get a question out like hey what you do know? you think yeah um so that that was a big thing I, I can't stress enough do it yourself first do it fail and then find somebody that can fix it yeah if you need to um my my COO David said that I would actually he, he prophesied this he said you're gonna be on a we're gonna be on a podcast talking about all the things you shouldn't fucking do yeah before you talk about anything you should 
he actually said this was going to happen without knowing you guys. <laughs> um, so, David, you're right again. You're right. <laughs> Prick. You're right. Um, so, that was a big thing. Then all of these, all of these uh, landing page companies and Facebook advertising marketing guys and all these gurus. Okay, two questions to ask them. Let me speak to the last success you had. I want to know how much runway and how much uh-huh. money they spent. Mm-hmm. Because they tell you what they can do. And they tell you a couple graphs. Either the company that worked that you worked for will release all of their shit to me with a non-disclosure agreement so I can see uh-huh. exactly how you went from cost of acquisition at 153 when they were running their own Facebook campaign to 2695, exactly how fucking long it took, exactly how many other plugins you did to the website, how many A-B testing you did, how many landing pages you did, what was the timeline, was it six months, six years? Because each month I got a burn rate. Like I had one guy actually say to me, and I we quickly dissolved this relationship. And I sound angry because I am, because this has cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars. Damn. Right. In, and in your first year. In my first year, I'm, I'm about yeah. I'm about six hundred thousand in, seven hundred thousand <sighs> in at this point. And I'm going to tell you a hundred percent, fifty percent of that is wasted. Fifty percent is that way because it's my first time, and I and I rested on some old laurels that I have. I'm like. That guy's a pro. He introduced me from this guy. Met him at a mastermind. Yeah. The mastermind endorses him. I should hire him. He did awesome shit. He's speaking here. He must be awesome. That was my due diligence. Fucking stupid me. Mm-hmm. Stupid fucking me. What an idiot. Because half these guys are, are, are first of all, selling you the same bullshit that you're going to buy from, you know, uh, false hope of, oh, geez, I don't want to get religious on people. I'm really sorry. <laughs> but because I'm, I'm, I'm an atheist. So kind of like people, so if this offends you, believe in something that gets you through the day. Yeah. And everybody needs an imaginary friend. I'm glad Jesus is yours. <laughs> um, I should get some controversy for yeah, you. Yeah, I'm not religious at all. He is. Are but, you? Yeah. But anyway. He's yeah. got kids now. You have to be. You got to be yeah. hopeful. <laughs> you guys can still talk to him, right? Um, so, but but the point is, is that like salvation through chair, through donations at the thing. I don't think Jesus was walking around going, give me two bucks, give me 10 bucks, I'll let you into heaven. Like the, the offering glass, you know, it's, you know. so I'm my point is, shit. is I had a bunch of people that all have their hand out and, and 90% of them are full of shit, man. This is like the wild west of marketing. You have, they're faceless. They're on the internet. Nobody ever meets. I had one guy literally say to me, so I gave him the Facebook budget. I gave, we're running our own Facebook accounts. We had another company do it for a little bit. I wasn't happy with what they were doing. They weren't converting. Yeah. They weren't selling anything. They were doing these long form and they, they kept going against the grain. I said to them, and, and I've, hey, I own my shit. We screwed up a lot. I, my due diligence, my deep dives, and with deep dives, do deep dives on mm-hmm. your audience, find out who's going to be your demographic. Well, they were all fucking wrong. I paid mm-hmm. a guy $15,000 to do a deep dive into, into our product who would want it. He said, urban centers, sing, uh, married women, professional women gave me this whole thing 26 to 38. Da, 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 income of this, income of this. Know who our customers are? Not one fucking person from an urban center. Not They're all single. They're all 24 to 48. They're all in the Midwest and in areas huh. where, like, that, that don't have access to as many surgery clinics, mm. as many gyms, as many other things. So, uh, and, and are actually fairly more educated because they're not stuck in an urban center working 95 hours a week. So, like, our deep dive was totally wrong. So originally when we marketed and we were told there was educated people, like it was going to be, you know, this businesswoman with an with MIT grads type thing. And so we market ourselves to speak to that audience. Sure. Right. We got very sciencey. We did these long form landing pages like, let me explain how this works. Transdermal technology is the epidermis. And we went through a 90 percent efficiency based on 20 percent of pills. You know what we got back? I got like hate mail, hate mail from people from on, the inter- on the Internet. Like they were like, prove it. I'm like, uh, here's the fucking studies. Yeah. And they're like, we yeah, don't believe you. That before, we yeah. don't believe you. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm like, go to Garden of Life and ask them to prove how much that pill absorbs. Nobody asked that for the past right. 50 years. Uh, right. How much do I get from a pill? Nobody's. They just buy them blindly. I'm actually giving you a study, and then the study is a scholarly study that is 37 pages long that is done at Harvard. Right, yeah. it's in it's on one of our testimonials or somewhere, and it's it's not a study in our product. I'm not going to b- lie to anybody. It's a study on transdermal technology, sure, and the efficiencies of it, and it's very complicated. Like I had to read it six times to understand <laughs> it, but it's there. I can't summarize it and break it down because that's illegal. Because then you're taking the points out that that work. Because it also shows the negative sides of it too, things that don't work. It's a very it's an unbiased. It's a scholarly published report, uh-huh. 
And they're like, well, that's too complicated. I'm like, oh, I'm fucking sorry. Like to the customer, I'm like, I'm sorry. Did we not make it baby good for you? <laughs> you know, cross, cross apple yeah, five. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there were some things that really frustrated me on that front is that people that come out of the woodwork that make blind promises. Um, so I took over Facebook marketing ourselves. And now that I understand it and I understand how we're doing our cold audience and I understand how to write, like I, I didn't finish, I jumped around there and sorry. So these guys wrote these long forms that were science, science, science. And I'm like, guys, and I had a great talk with, um, with a guy that's on TV. Uh, oh God, it's, you know the TV show The Prophet? Yeah. Okay, I so I, I, I bought a charity thing to be able to have an hour conference with him. Right, an hour, one hour. What's That's his it. name? Yeah, Bill. Oh, the prophet. <laughs> uh, I, have I know idea. exactly what you're talking about. I like him. Yeah, he's, it's Marcus. Marcus. Yes, Marcus. Marcus, Marcus. Yeah, Marcus. I like Marcus a lot. I like yeah. the show a lot. Great show. Yeah. And and people process and pro- product. People how do you product. how do you like the show? And I've never heard of it. The Prophet's on CNBC. It's really, one of those new channels. Really <laughs> out, yeah. It's not in a fitness show. I'm yeah. on, I'm on <laughs> yeah. Netflix and sports. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. all yeah. I watch. Yeah. Even though, yeah, I don't know how I got into that because I don't it's, watch a whole lot of TV. But it's I've a great show. Yeah. It's a great show. And 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 you can find, I, that's something actually too. Use the resources that are available. You can watch, you can binge watch CNBC, uh, The Prophet with Marcus mm-hmm. and get a lot more strategic development within your business 100%. from that than you'll ever get from binge watching Game of Thrones. Yeah. So like pick your poison. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, it's you true. Know? And he's fucking entertaining. Or even like Shark Tank, listening to like Absolutely. the questions that they ask. Absolutely. They Find ask it. You reason. don't know what it is. Write it down and go yeah. Google it and figure out how that can yeah. apply to you because yeah. there's a ton of shit out there. Totally. Yeah. You know, there's a ton. There's more than we've ever had to be able to benefit yourself. It's like these little mini seminars you're getting every day yeah. or podcasts. Yeah, podcast, absolutely. There's I mean, you guys, yeah. there's other things. This might be helpful to somebody starting out, sure, sure. you know? Yep. Yeah. You know? Um, I remember, I remember the fr- I was like a, I would live in like just go figure this shit out type of thing. The first time I emailed an investor, so it was I don't know, 7 years ago or something. And I was like trying to just get a meeting. He's like, "All right, send me your deck." And I was like, the fuck's a deck? Uh, yeah, they just say they don't say pitch deck, sales yeah. deck. I said, send, send me like, a deck. I had to like Google my backyard. Yeah, yeah. I had to Google like, what's so a you deck. Send, yeah, you send them a two by four yeah. and some like, nails. No. So I had to create a deck. I'm like, all right, I guess this is my deck. And even like things like that, like for instance, a business plan. God, I didn't want to build a business plan. We've got access to like Live Plan, mm-hmm. LivePlan.com. It's a self building business plan. You put in, it asks yeah. you 50 questions, and it builds it. It fucking builds it. I yeah. built I built a business plan that was six uh, eight pages with astral flow charts, projections, everything in like three hours. Yeah. Damn. Three hours. Yeah. Right? Like That's I actually awesome. went home and I was like, Hey Clint, my older brother who's really smart and fucking an epic guy. And I'm like, Hey, look, what do you think of this? He goes, When the fuck did you go to school? Ah. <laughs> Because when did you figure this shit out? He goes, uh-huh. that's really well done. I'm like, oh, you know, I didn't tell him I did an app. Yeah. Right? But it was everything, and he looks at shit like this. He has people in asking mm-hmm. to invest all the time. So that was pretty epic. Um, live plan. So Marcus said to me this, and this is the most important information or advice I got. Sadly, it was a year and a half into my development, or a year into it. Uh, I wish I would have talked to him earlier, but he said to me, um, he said, Shane, I don't care about your shiny shit, about how good it is. He uh-huh. goes, here's what I'm going to do. Are those my clean, boat cleaning guys? Uh, there, yeah, there's some dudes out there. Okay, just like, let me just... Or, a, gonna or the have, pirates. Maybe half an hour, just a sec. We're going to come on with some guns. Shane's the best. She, he's so good. So, like, Shane, when, when we first met Shane, we had uh, we had uh, we were host, hosting this fitness event on the Santa Monica Pier. He had just started the drip company. He didn't out. even launch it yet. Oh, yeah. He it wasn't was even open yet. At the event. Yep. I remember I was so geeked that he was coming. He showed up at six in the morning. Showed up at six in the morning. He was hosting for interviews a f- for there. A three o'clock event. Ah, something like that. I don't know. Shane was too geek yeah. for it. You said what? I'm gonna buy them lunch for making them, making them white. Oh, what nice. a guy! What a guy! Shane. Shane. This, this is what happens when you do a podcast on a boat. Yep. He's uh, buying low. He's buying lunch for the <laughs> boat cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> so, they, so they got an extra thirty minutes. <laughs> I bought us thirty minutes. <laughs> deal. Deal. All right, so we're back. you're talking about Marcus. So, yeah, Marcus so, tells you. so what he said to me, and I'm going to do it. You guys got cameras, so I'm going to show you a little display. Okay. He said, here's your patch. Here's your com- uh, competitor's patch. Here is your other competitor's patch. Uh-huh. These are all now your patch. They're just your product, but your two competitors are standing behind it. They're covered up. You can't tell people about your price benefit. You can't tell people about your production value because it's the same product. Yeah. Why the fuck do I buy from you? Because I don't care about your shiny shit. I don't care about your efficiency. Why do I buy from you? I said, well, why do you buy from me? He goes, yeah, because I'm buying it from you. He goes, your product is exactly the same. People aren't going to do the due diligence. They're not going to research sure. it and find out. 
right? They buy from what they like, what mm-hmm. they trust. So why they buy from you? And the best advice I got was he said, he said, I, I answered him. I said, well, we're a company that gives back. We're a company that cares about the world. If we give that much of a shit about being profitable to support causes and charities, you'll probably care about our product development because it's great. That's it. Then he goes, you need to promote your charities more. Yeah. So you need to talk about how much you do. We changed our whole website and added on our charitable page, and we're now bragging about it. We're really, really ex- not exploiting but, it, but really showing people what we do. And we've given back. I've given back. <laughs> I can't even a dollar value, but I've given back a lot. Why of money. don't you? I mean, you don't have to tell us. But why not talk about the dollar value? Uh, because then there's an expectation when you go to events. Uh, that you sure. have to give some, a certain sure. amount. And we believe that we have... Dude, this dude only gave us 200 bucks. Like well, we have, we have, yeah. I have three pillars. Yeah. Three pillars, right? We have sponsorship, awareness, and branding. So when we sponsor an event, we create awareness for an event. Or sorry, or um, or the sponsorship is the, is a cash investment. Awareness is our marketing, what we'll do with Instagram, web, whatever. Yeah. And then the other one is actual labor, like actually showing up like Hank swinging a wrench. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which we did for the Habitat of Humanity LA. Cool, yeah. So he said, "What what makes you stand out?" He goes, "That's what you're. That's your product. That's what you're selling." And it was the best advice I got because I was kind of in my own way. I think there's a lot of crossover with that with any brand or product or business, where at least initially people are buying stuff because the people or the, or the branding or, or what it looks like. Uh, on on that note, Shane, I'm sure we could talk for another five hours, and maybe we will after we turn off the mics. But that is our time for this evening. We'll have to catch up again real soon. We thank you, and I'm sure we'll talk in the near future. Thank you.